Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Growth Accelerator. Brandon here, your Chief Marketing Strategist with another great episode. Today we are speaking with Mr. Mark Douglas. Mark is a great friend of mine. We've been in this marketing game together for the past two years. I met Mark online in one of the ClickFunnels One Funnel Away challenges and we just kind of hit it off. Uh, Mark a Meta Blueprint Certified Digital Marketing Associate and a Digital Marketing Specialist and the founder of the digital marketing agency, The Mental Marketer. He built simple systems for business owners and online entrepreneurs to generate hundreds of qualified leads and sales every month for their business without followings or huge budgets. He works with businesses all over the world to help them achieve success and create lasting changes in their lives organizations and environment. His biggest passion is sharing knowledge and has a private Facebook group, Photo Building 101, in which he teaches and shares his knowledge on a daily basis. He has an associate's degree in accounting from San Antonio College and a bachelor's degree in marketing from the University of Texas in San Antonio. A veteran in the U.S. Army, Mark, appreciate your service. He has an insatiable thirst for knowledge, which means he never stops reading and consuming content on sales, communication, leadership, and marketing. When he's not building funnels, Mark likes to spend his free time working out, cooking, reading, traveling, and the occasional round of golf, or trying an inter interesting international dish as one of the varieties of the cultural restaurants in Houston, Texas. And with that, let's get on with the show. Hey, hey, you there, Brandon? I'm here, Mark. How's it going? All right. Good morning. I didn't practice for the questions. Let's Good job. go. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect you to do your homework, Mark, as always. You don't do your homework for Wednesdays. You didn't do your homework for me today. Man, I didn't get your bio. I didn't get your headshot. I got nothing. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take, take the craziest picture that I can find you on Facebook and put it up. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, no, check your email. I sent it two minutes before the call. All right. All right. I'll do that. I'll be sure to do that. Mark, welcome. It is a pleasure to have you on the Business Growth Accelerator. This isn't new for either one of us. We meet every Wednesday morning for pitch practice, and we're always in communication, chatting with each other to help each other out and help yeah. them grow our businesses side by side together. But I do appreciate you coming on here and we are going to be helping the fine folks that listen to this podcast, everything about marketing. As you know, the purpose of this podcast is to give people the motivation to one, keep going and to fix that digital foundation that is the cornerstone of their business. So why don't you introduce yourself to the audience here and tell them a little about yourself and who you are, what you do, and how you do it. All right. Thanks so much, Brandon. Yeah. I just first want to say thanks so much for having me today. It's always a pleasure talking with you, my man, <laughs> Brandon. Sure. Congratulations on, on the podcast. I'm an avid listener. I think I have seen every episode so far. So it's an honor for you to ask me to come on. I appreciate that. Keep up the, the great work. When I typically introduce myself, I'll say that the guy behind the mental marketer and the private Facebook group, Funnel Building 101, what I really do is I help business owners and entrepreneurs out there to leverage the power of sales funnels to build the lifestyle business of their dreams. We work with coaches, consultants, authors, and actually we work with the, like influencers. And our main goal is to help them bring their message to the masses, bring, bring their message and bring their products and services out there and use sales funnels to do that. Yeah. So. What did you do before the whole sales funnel deal? What got you into it? <laughs> uh, what did I do before sales funnels? Oh man, before sales funnels, I had no clue what sales funnels were, but no, I won't say I didn't have a clue what they were. I knew what they were, but I didn't refer to it as a sales funnel. It was the sales process. 
and I was deep into corporate America. That's the career path I had chosen. I had chosen a career path in corporate America in insurance auto claims, where I had amassed up this 20 years of experience doing auto claims for a Fortune Top 10 company. Mm-hmm. Fortune top 10 company that I'd, I'd worked my way up the proverbial corporate ladder doing everything that I thought was everything that everyone tells you that you need to do, get a job, go to school. It's not Kent State, but it is, I did go to school here in Texas. <laughs> Kent State. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I know these things about you, Brandon. Yeah, yep. I did go to Kent State, Kent Reed, Kent Wright, Kent State, degree in chemistry, and here I am uh, recording podcasts talking about entrepreneurship. So they did a great job. Yeah. 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 I was let go from that company after spending a lot of my life climbing that corporate ladder. After getting let go from that company, I was in a position to consider my next move. That's what it was. I was carefully considered my next move easily to go back into that same profession, but I really thought long and hard about what my passions were. And my degree in college when I went was business okay. marketing. And just after a an inventory of the books that I sought out, the shows that I watched, the things that I gravitated towards, I found that I everything led to sales, marketing, and leadership. And it was a chance occurrence on social media, Facebook, when I ran into an ad. That one ad probably changed the trajectory of my life. The ad was for a four-week social media marketing course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, being deep into corporate America, I was focused on that. I was using social media to stay in touch with family and friends. I probably had a total of 300 at the most friends on social media and followers. And I think today, wow, how that number has changed. So I would see these ads pop up across my feed. And then I noticed these other things, how I would yeah, I would search something on you know, Google or another search engine, and then all of a sudden, yeah, I would get advertisements that would follow me around. Mm-hmm. I, I saw the process, but I had no clue how it was happening, why it was happening, or, or anything about that. But when I took that four-week social media marketing course, it opened up my eyes. And I always tell this story about the statistics that blew my mind. What are those? Okay. Those statistics that I learned in that course were that the advertisers on Facebook are spending over $200 billion on the platform. $200 $200 billion. Now the difference between a million and a billion is, yeah, a lot of is, is huge. But when they're spending over $237 billion, I thought, oh my goodness, if advertisers are spending that much, then they have, it's inevitable that they're making much more than that spend. Yeah. And so that really blew my mind. The second statistic that blew my mind was the ROI, the rate of return on advertising on Google, and which you're the expert on Google, was over 400%, the average rate of return. And I thought, wow, I had some experience running a business before, and to receive a 25% rate of return was considered average a 50 to 100% rate of return, and you're doing phenomenal. You're doing phenomenal. But with with online marketing, I think because the overhead and the the barrier to entry can be almost non-existent. You don't 
you can avoid a lot of those expenses that come with your traditional brick and mortar. And when you can save those expenses, then you're able to increase the profit. So those were the statistics that really blew my mind and said, this is where I need to be. I need to be in this online space. And this is where the future is going. And this was just several years ago. It's amazing to see how the landscape has changed just in that time. Yeah, especially in the past couple of years when we had the lockdowns, it was at home. They only had one outlet and that was their computer or phone to order or transact and get the things that they needed. So you spent 20 years in the insurance world. I spent a little bit of time in the insurance world as well. So I get where you're coming from there. So you'd probably retire after that, that long of a period. And then you jump into this digital marketing deals. What was the one thing you wish you'd have known when you began your digital marketing career and starting that business? Oh, the one thing that I would have known, man, you great question, Brandon. If I were to think about something that I, I learned the hard way, <laughs> is I learned the hard way. I think one of my first ventures into creating a, a a digital product, and that's what I was. That's what I was doing in essence. Information digital product, and I spent a lot of time creating this digital course. And if I would have, if I would have known in the beginning that I should not create this course for myself. I should not create this course because I think it's a good idea. I would have actually taken the time to survey and find out what the market wanted, what the market wanted and not just my ideal. So I did it backwards. Can you understand? Yeah. Creating the product, instead of creating the product first, I would have looked for the demand. And that's a that was a big difference. We have these big ideas in our own heads of what we what we think others would like or what we think others would spend their money on. But sometimes those ideas that we have aren't necessarily what the market wants. And that's what I discovered. And if I would have known that in the beginning, that would have been a nice little time saver. <laughs> I think I've done it once or twice where I've just thrown something out there, see if the official bike and most of the times they don't. So definitely having that market. Re- yeah, definitely having that market research behind your product creation is much needed. And it goes for the traditional service businesses as well. Just because you cut lawns does do the neighborhoods in your area need you to cut their lawns. So yeah, yeah definitely do that. Do that, yeah, do that market it. research, surveys, polls, do that first and then create the product around that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've been doing this for a while and hopefully somebody listening to this episode gets that, uh, gets that aha moment, that light bulb click off in their head and they wanna go start helping local businesses or some other type of entrepreneurial deal online, what advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? Ah, uh, okay, okay. I run a community and I'm very active on social media. I think we talked about how many followers I had when I started. That, mm-hmm. number, has, that number has exponentially grown. And it's interesting how when you are exposed to more people, then more people hear your message and you get a lot more feedback. And uh, that's something that a lot of people will come to me and ask, Hey, I want to get started. If I were to, if I were to give you, give someone a tip, just starting off, the biggest tip that I would give them is to be clear on why you are wanting to pursue a career or wanting to pursue a business, what makes you a, what, where's your desire at? Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Is it just to make money? Typically it's not just to make money, but it's the underlying 
a result of what that money does for you. So be clear on why you want to get into the field and also go into the field. Do not skip the first step, which is to plan. Do not skip that step. This is the step because it's not an easy road. It's not it. It's not an easy road and there will be obstacles that will come your way. And the moment those obstacles are presented to you, I believe you need a solid foundation to, to reference in yourself and reference to, to remember exactly why you're doing it. It's not a question of if those obstacles will come, it's when they will come and how you react to them is what's most important. The obstacles, they could be big, they could be small. You have to go through those obstacles and still come out on the other side without you're learning something. That's what I would that's what I would say to someone out there starting. Don't skip the first step. And it's a step that a lot of people skip is actually getting clear on why they are wanting to pursue business online or even a service-based business, all of it. Service-based businesses aren't easy either. They're not. That fulfillment can be, be a bit of a bear. And when I got into it, my initial thought and goal was just to do affiliate marketing. And that was just sell other people's products and services and earn a small commission on the back end. You turn it on at night, run a couple ads, and then you wake up to, to cash in your bank account. What, a, what everybody is putting out there, the dream to be online with all the ads that, that I typically see because they're targeting me because that's what I want to do. But it's not as easy as you think. There's a lot that goes with it. So during this journey that you've been on, what have been the best resources that have helped you out along the way? Resources. Oh, I think the best resources that I have helped me along the way are other people, I, the tools, I think the tools have evolved over the years. When I talk about tools, I'm talking about on, any tools that you're using to, to run your business. That might be, you can even say, okay, payroll systems, things to stay organized, things to stay more productive, those tools and resources, they evolve over time. It's funny. I think each age bracket can say, when I was, when I started, it was this. And it seems like it's always something that was a little more difficult, right? Whether you're talking to your children and saying, I had to walk to school three miles and now you don't have to do this. So <laughs> the resource. Was it, uphill, was it uphill both ways? It was uphill both ways with the five pound rucksack on my back. <laughs> they evolve over time and it, they seem to make things easier. But I think one of the most important resources that will always benefit you is the connections that you have with other people and those human resources. The conversations that you have, the relationships that you have, and when you can utilize those resources for win-win situations. That's been the, one of the most important realizations I've had. And that it's been the most important resources. Yeah. The, the most important resources that I've used. So I wouldn't say it's some, not some check sheet, not, <laughs> not a software, but other people and being able to actually start those relationships it would, and yeah, yeah 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 that's it you, you mentioned other people and i totally agree with you there because it takes other people to help people out you can't go it alone um, yeah. by any means you definitely have to have that community behind you to support you and cheer you on and give you something to work for so that that's a perfect segue into the next question there so you mentioned that people have been your best resource who are the top three people that have been the most influential to you along your journey? Top three? I know. Oh. You're going to make some people mad. I get it. The top three people that, that have helped you out along the way and been most influential. 
Nice question. Reminds me of years back when you would be able to add your fave five on your phone or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> your MySpace top eight. Oh, you got taken off the MySpace top eight. You were, those were fighting actions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Top three. Oh my goodness. Oh, number one, I would have to say it's been Russell Brunson. <laughs> Russell Brunson. Yeah. From Click Funnels, yeah. Russell Brunson from Click Funnels and his Secrets Trilogy series, dot com expert in traffic. Those three books have served as a, a framework, a guideline, and a reference to for funnel building and online marketing and traffic generation. Yeah, ready reference there. From there, I would have to go to my all time biggest mentor or influential person and that has been tony robbins okay tony, yeah tony robbins has inspired me for more than 20 years and continues to inspire me really on the the mindset and attitude and realizing your abilities number three number three most person that has, I would have to, I would have to go with my guy I listen to consistently day after day in the ClickFunnels community by the name of Myron Golden. Myron, he is absolutely the man. I was expecting you to pick that one because his philosophies in marketing and sales are absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. So what is it about Myron that influences you the most? Yeah. The way Myron takes the concepts and puts them in these it will he teaches from the bible so the stories that he tell are from the bible and they just uh, they really resonate with me and how he and i love how he's able to what i'm going to say it like alliterated how he's able to he'll put these these concepts and he'll have rhyming words or, and he just puts it in a logical, logical way that just says, wow, that just, that makes so much sense. Uh, and I love that about him, how he has that ability to make it sound maybe a little bit melodic, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little, a little melodic and sounds good to the ear. And that, that makes it easy to understand. I think that's what I like about it. And I think to myself, wow, could I come up with that type of phrase? And when you come up with those type of, what is he called? Tweetable, repeatable. And those phrases just stick with you. I think that's what I really like about him. And he has a, and he has a, he has a story for everything. It's almost like whatever you might, you think you might be struggling with, you can listen. He has a story for it. Now, he's been around for a long time, been doing the sales and marketing training for over 20 years and started off as a garbage man, which is crazy. And my first, my first introduction to him was, it was either through the 30 days book that I got from one of the ClickFunnels courses, or it might've been Funnel Hacking Lab. I don't remember which one it was, but I know he's in both of those. And the one thing that stood out, and you mentioned he uses the Bible to build businesses, which is a fantastic <laughs> book. In fact, and I think it's first Kings 14 or maybe chapter four. I know there's a four in there. Don't quote me on it, but it's King Solomon's business plan. Yeah. And how he has everything set up to, to run his business when he has all of his governors, et cetera. These are the C-suite people and then moves down from there. And then even him getting, even King Solomon getting started, like he didn't start on his own. He had people go out and market for him and tell them that he is now king. He just did uh, do that. So definitely read Kings if you're if you are in the business world and you own the business and use that framework that's in there. And, and then a sec and then a second story that he actually mentioned in the 30 days was a widow, just lost her husband, had no way to make money. Right. And yeah. there was a prophet that told her to get seven empty jars, fill them with oil, and go sell them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that lose everything 
and don't know where to go and figure out where the resources are around them to then make the money they need. It's a great story. I don't have it referenced here, but yeah. it will be referenced in the show notes. So be sure to check out the notes to check out those two stories for the exact Bible verses. We'll quote you on the Bible, right? <laughs> I remember. No, I think that widow was asking for a handout and the prophet said, no, you have resources. You have resources that you don't know that you have. And he brought light to the resources and actually he coached her. He coached her to look around you. You've got these seven jars. Go take these jars out there to the market. And then, because he wasn't going to forgive the debt. I think he wasn't going to forgive the debt that 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 the widow had and the widow was feeling sorry for herself as if she didn't have the ability to to come up with it. And he helped to bring out what was inside. That's I love that story too. It's a good story. Yeah. And moving into the online marketing and selling, there's a lot of grifters out there that are selling the, the snake oil, so to speak. What is one common myth you want to debunk? What do I want to debunk? Yeah. What do I want? I think just the, the debunking the notion or the idea that running an online business is a push button venture. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely sold like that a lot. I see the ads where it's this simple. Just take this, use this and do that. And overnight you're a millionaire. Yeah. 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 And I want to, I debunk that because I was, I fell victim to that. Also, <laughs> I fell victim to that. Just, I think it's sometimes people don't want to, people don't want to think they have to do work. I think sometimes people want to think that they can just push a button. People want to think that. So it's sold that way a lot. It's sold that way because that's what people want to hear. It's the same thing in, in the, uh, the fitness or the weight loss industry. People don't want to hear that they need to exercise. <laughs> they need to wake up and they need to be consistent. And they would love to believe that just us taking a pill will shed the pounds and they'll wake up overnight and they'll be looking like this this chiseled person in this chiseled body same thing happens in the, the online marketing world because that's what people don't want to hear so it's not what marketers are going to say they're going to in, tell you that and i think that is not the truth and the difference between it being simple and easy steps are simple but it may not be easy but if there was something to debunk it's just the fact that it's going to be work. <laughs> it's going to be work. It's going to be learning some, some skills. Maybe it could be skills that you already know, but maybe you need to actually transfer those skills to the online world, or it could be skills that you don't know and that you need to become better at. And that's it. I think there's an expectation of instant gratification <laughs> and that's not always the case but it's but people sell it they sell instant gratification daily hourly every minute right yeah everybody wants that that instant gratification that that hit of endorphins and dopamine to make themselves feel better and yeah it just doesn't happen i, I would say i've probably fallen victim once or twice my spin and bought a course that, or thought I was bought, buying services that weren't what they were sold to be. But yeah, I totally understand it and get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, so this is an oddball question that usually stumps most of my guests here. If you could step into my shoes, what would you have asked yourself that I haven't asked you yet? Oh, wow, what would I, I would have asked me, what is my favorite hobby? <laughs> Great question. No. I probably should add that to the list. What is your favorite hobby, Mark? What do you do when you're not building funnels? 
Oh, what do I do? I am probably, if I could all day, every day, I'd probably, I'd probably be playing a round of golf, a nice round of golf, or maybe even, okay, my favorite, you're asking my favorite hobby, not all of my hobbies, right? I'd say, okay, I don't know. It's a toss up between cooking and golf, cooking and golf, cooking and golf, cooking and golf, because surprisingly I do, I love food, Brandon. I do. I love food. Who, who doesn't? I love it too. It's over the past past year and a half. <laughs> no, say that again. I said I love food too, and it started a show over the past year and a half. Oh yeah. Surprisingly, I'm sometimes people say, Do you eat? Yes, I do eat. I do. I love to eat. I love, yeah. I don't typically overeat a lot, but I do love a lot of different foods. No, but what no, if you if there was a question that you hadn't asked me right now, you want me to answer it in the business sense? Business, personal, whatever you like. Okay, if there was a, okay, if there was something, what haven't you asked me that, that I would have liked for you to ask? You can, you can, okay. Wow, okay. It's going to, it's going to X out my arms. Don't worry. We'll get you taken care of. You'll sound as professional as you can be. I like my arms. <laughs> it was, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. I did an interview with Ben Moot at, i never forget the first Funnel Hacking Live because I mentioned it to him last time. You were there too. You mm -hmm. were there when I asked him about it. And he told him about the interview that we did the year before. And in that interview, he said that, he said, we have to learn how to speak a different way. He said, the traditional way that we're taught to teach isn't, it isn't how you sell online. Mm -hmm. said that you're taught to watch all the ums and the ahs, but that's actually how you sell online. When you have these uhs and ah, yeah, <laughs> it makes you come off as more human. And I, I always remember that part of that interview. That was just a little side story that I wanted to tell about the odds and ums because I've been making a lot of them and I do a lot. I'm always saying, but no, if there was, what would I ask? Ask me if there is anything that I would, what is it that I love about what I do? Right. What is it that you love about running your Facebook group and helping businesses with their sales funnels? I love the impact that, that I'm able to have on other people. For example, I was one of my previous, one of my most, I won't say most recent, but maybe a long-term customer of mine recently had a breakthrough and, and completed a, a course that they had been working on for a couple of months and they've gotten their first sale. That's a great feeling to see someone else break through and actually follow a process and, and see results from it. Another person that I'm working with was struggling to, to figure out how to bring their knowledge out here into a sellable product. We worked with them to put together his course on rehabbing homes, put it inside of a membership area and got the first sale within a week. And, and it's been rocking and rolling ever since. Promoting, starting to be more comfortable in front of camera, doing the marketing part. A lot of people don't, they maybe don't struggle with the, the creation part of a digital product or something that they can sell, but some people struggle with the marketing part, the getting out of their shell and getting out of their shell and start to slowly go from not being comfortable marketing to becoming comfortable marketing to making it to being second nature and coming natural. And, and that's what I like to see. It's the growth and the results that that I'm able to have a part in. Very nice. So as we bring this to a 
unfortunate close. Where can people watching and listening to this connect with you to learn more about you, the mental marketer, and the services that you provide? I can be found on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all under The Mental Marketer. You can search for The Mental Marketer and you'll find me. Do a Google search. Thanks to Brandon, I'll come up very top of the results. There you go. <laughs> you go. Happy to help you out with that and get, uh, get you known by Google and Bing. So when people hear this or maybe see one of your ads, they go back and search the mental marketer, you do pop up. Yeah. Very last question here. Would you ever move into teaching others to become a, I would say a digital marketing, I wouldn't, I don't know, guru or expert and group curator and all those great things. Would you ever move into actually being a coach for those coaches? Coaching the coach. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Coaching the coach's coach. <laughs> they say that once you've uh, once you've achieved something i think the next step is for you to help someone else do it as the saying goes i think i i can't quote it directly maybe you can help me with this quote brandon but it's when you can teach someone is when you become the expert or yeah or, i think that's pretty much it in a nutshell when you're able to when you're able to teach it then you, well you gotta be able to do it first to be able to then teach it. And that's when you become, or the student becomes the master. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if it just, it's just something that comes naturally when others see you and they see you being successful for them to, you just, I'd say in the past couple of days, I've had two to three people comment or message me in my inbox asking for for me to help them or for me to teach them a particular skill so it so i've i have actually so the the answer to the question is yes the answer to the question is yes i think sharing what you've learned to help someone else is i don't know if i don't know i know i feel it does everybody feel it does everybody feel that's necessary or is it just, or is it just to share the knowledge and monetize it? Uh, it, it it's not, you say monetize it, but not always that you coach people and you, I think you teach them and you're not always paid, maybe not in, in money. Oh yeah. There's a ton of free help that I give out all the time. And most of the services that I do charge for, I add on so much extra stuff that it, it makes it worth 10 to a hundred times more than, than what I sell. I'll sell a domain for 17 bucks, but then I'll take 10, 20 minutes of my time, if not longer, to make sure that it's hooked up on Google properly. Mm -hmm. That's just going the extra mile to make sure that I'm giving my client the best chance to succeed. Yeah. 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 So yes. So you will monetizing be, it. Yeah. Monetize it. Knowledge is, is power in the world, the info product. Today, there's more online universities than ever before, and having the access to the internet, there's plenty of plenty of opportunity to learn and to sell that knowledge as well. I think Dean and Tony have their own coaching program that helps people sell their knowledge online. The opportunities are boundless. You know, even if you are a service-based business where you're a plumber, roofer, electrician, et cetera, you can sell your knowledge online to help other plumbers, roofers, and electricians and have that additional uh, revenue flow. So think about that. Well, Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you. I'm sure I'll see you around later today and definitely yeah. next Wednesday for our pitch practice. Everybody and anybody is welcome to join us. Just leave a comment or send a voice message if you want more information on how to join us on pitch practice every Wednesday morning, at 7 a.m. Eastern. So with that, I bid you adieu, my friend. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Brandon, and congratulations on all the success on this podcast. I'll be listening to this episode as well, and I think there's one episode I need to catch up on, but um, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Appreciate it, Mark.
Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Business Growth Accelerator. As always, for all the resources and information discussed in this episode, you can check out the show notes. Be sure to hit up thementalmarketer.com for all things sales, funnel, and growing your business online. And if you have any feedback for the episode, we'd love to hear it. Feel free to leave me a voice note on this episode and be sure to follow BKXX Enterprises on all the socials at BKXX Enterprises. Here's to your success.